Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are playing Viego against Talia. I'm going to be showing you this new rune page that I've been cooking up. I think it's very, very strong uh, against range champs that you cannot hard commit and long fight against, which Conk would obviously be more beneficial against. I know Conk's like the standard page, but I think versus these comps, if you have a look, Talia, Teemo, like Varus and uh, Renata, and also Yone has really good kiting potential. These sort of champs, I believe that Hob's just better because you're never going to be having a long fight. You're just going to be bursting in and out, fighting. And then for the build this game, we want Kraken because what Hob does is if you W auto Q auto, that's four autos basically. And then the Hob helps you get two more extra after. So you get two procs of Kraken. So really, really nice burst there. But um, also we go Stride this game and then GA. So... The reason as to stride there is because they have lots of range champs and kiting abilities, so being able to stick onto them is very, very nice. And also, we go GA because they have a Renata, so it's kind of like whoever gets a reset kind of wins this game. If Renata's passive gets a reset, then we probably lost that fight, and that means I didn't get a reset because they got a reset. So that's why we're in GA third. And yeah, for this game, we're just pathing towards Bob because we're pretty well useless against Teemo as Viego. Because he's just going to push in, have ward, have wards down, and Trin really provides no setup. But in bot lane, we have setup down there, so pathing towards there is going to be very, very uh, easy for gank setup. But we do have to be a bit careful. They do have a Varus Renata, a very typically strong uh, combo. So just being careful of 3v3's bot, but just, just uh, paying attention to where Talia shows up. Not sure where she started here. Um, yeah, so we're just pathing down. Typically, you just want to full clear on Viego. It's pretty standard. If you have any other champions you want to see, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I play pretty much every champ, so if you want something, I'll definitely play it. And chuck a video about it. A little guide. So yeah, here we're just doing a chill full clear. Nothing, nothing crazy. Missing our Q there. Messing up our clear a little bit. Don't pay. Don't look at that. Yeah, but here... Very aggressive bot lane, what's happening here. We just go over and we see Talia flashing in, and then we just go ahead and just flash on this Talia here. Probably didn't need to flash for the kill, but I just wanted to get the kill just to start snowballing, get my treasure hunter going, all of that jazz. And then we get the cannon minion with the Talia re uh, reset. Yeah, and now we just go back to farming our camps because on Viego you want to get to 1300 gold before you recall first, so that's the goal usually. Um, if you can't, 700 gold's fine, 1050 is fine, but yeah, it's either recurve, recurve longsword, or just noon quiver. Which, if you get noon quiver, you're really hard chilling on this champ because once you have noon quiver, you're just one shotting your camps, and it feels really, really nice. Here, yeah, I ping my support at a come to the crab at a base just in case there's a fight here but he doesn't listen but it's just a good habit to have pinging your support so they don't just uh autopilot run to lane yeah we just check uh that jungle and we just pop a ward down and then bot bot gets really spicy gets put down on the pink here then my my bot lane unfortunately dies so we just take the base here we have a really really nice base regardless and then we just grab noon quiver and now we are Hard chilling. I thought about going stride first, but since I had 1300 gold, like, can't say no. Can't say no to Noon Quiver on this champion, man. It's so nice. Because you're passive on your Q. When you hit abilities, when you auto after, you get double on hits, so that's why it's so nice. Because camp becomes so fast. Trinity pings for a gank here. I consider it, but just the thing is, Teemo can run away with Swifty Boots so easily, as what I saw, so. Unless I come from behind, which I can't really get it behind him. I don't know if it's awarded, so it's really like a low, low, low chance gang. It's like low, low reward, high risk, because the chance of it not working is high. And even if we kill him, Teemo doesn't lose much, because we're not like diving him and denying a bunch of minions, right? So that gang's not good to go for, typically. If that, was a, if that was a dive and there's like a cannon minion about to crash, then I'd be able to go for the dive if he's chunked or something like that. But obviously that's just not the case there, guys. So hitting a full clear here with our noon quiver, it's really, really fast. And Talia shows top there, so 
I opt into going to the river here, I believe, because one, my Gromp hasn't spawned yet because my clear is so insanely fast, plus the, the, the level 3 little fight that happened delayed my Gromp and blue buff, but yeah. So yeah, we we look for a bot gank instead of farming Talia's Raptors because they have no sums, I believe, and yeah. We have a really, really good setup, so for everybody to get their flashes out, it's really nice. Probably could have bursted that Varus there. Probably a bit of a misplay on my end. Just because I have Hob, I probably could just W auto auto Q auto whatever. That sort of a variation. But regardless, that Chunk's really good because on that stacked wave, we're able to deny that wave now. And the thing is, we can't dive them, so making them base there is really good. And the reason we can't dive them there, there is because they have a Renata. And Renata counters dies because of a W, you know, the reset thing. Um, so... Just want to be careful of Renata like that. You just want to be playing in ways where you, we're not fully committing and you can just leave. But yeah, so that gank there was really good in that situation since we can't actually dive the champs. So just forcing them off it instead is just the solution. And here, yeah, my top camps are respawning. So I don't want to do Gromp there. I just want to base. And the, the Gromp won't give me a buy. If Gromp gave me Crackness Link, I'd go take it before my top camps. But since Gromp wouldn't benefit me there at all, I'm just going to opt into grabbing the base and going top side. And then here we just want to play for our level 6. Talia takes scrubs so we know he's top side. And then Tali T uh, Trindamir is also top side in his jungle doing some weird proxy strat. But that's pretty typical for this guy. He always likes to proxy on Trindamir. And we've hit 6 now but all of our camps are respawning and Vigo kills his camps really, really fast, so if you can just do those on spawn, you're you're really happy to just do that. Look at look at these autos. 200 damage autos. Absolutely smacking these things. And the thing is, there's not really many opportunities this game besides Bob. Um, so we're just playing off of that. And then we'll just head into the wolves here. Yeah, very nice. Since our setup's just bought, we have Cinder set up and Nautilus set up. And then mid has no setup. Like mid, we can't really gank, and then neither with top. That's why we're just playing around bots so heavily this game, if you were wondering, guys. And then after Grumpy, I get level 7, so I'm a bit stronger, so it's a little bit of a power spike. Plus, their bot has to walk up currently. So we could possibly look for an opportunity here, but we haven't seen Talia, so she can count again. Let's just keep that in mind. So we have to play in a different way, as usual. We got a three-man ult off there. That's really important here because I need to make sure I can kill multiple people. And then I get the reset with the Renata. So I get a reset and it, like two resets at once with Viega and Renata. So that was a very beautiful play right there. And then we just quickly order this turret and then we instantly base. So we get the plate and then we go topside here. And then we have Kraken in base. Like we are snowballing this game. It feels really good to have Hob in that situation there. Conk wouldn't really affect that play. We grab sweep. We want to grab sweep around the the this time uh, like nine minutes I'd say is a pretty good good mark to go sweeper because that's when you're not really going to be sequencing your camps as much anymore and you want to be moving around the map and just uh, making sure you're not going over vision or at least clearing vision and applying pressure. Like here, it's also really nice for his team, right? For obvious reasons, his shrooms, yeah. Go for the W on him there, but he flashes. And then I probably didn't need to Q smite there, but I just thought I needed to do a bit of damage just to help the action get the kill there, because the minions that would obviously block, so... I think I contributed to that kill. I'm not sure if it was needed or not, but let's just go ahead and say it was. And here we just go straight for the full clear. Why is that? Because there's no opportunities mid, so we want to be efficient, right? So we want to be getting golden XP while going towards our next location, which is the bot lane here. And so in that way we can just path down, full clear our camps, get towards the bot lane, and then play around them yet again, play for their setup, and then hopefully play for a dragon, because we already have one dragon, right? So if we can get that, we can start stacking dragons. Not that I think dragons are like the key to winning, but like 
they're just nice to have. Um, if there's nothing else huge to attain at the time. Okay, for the blue, we're just matching Talia here, which is really good because we're, we're way stronger than her. So if you're ever stronger than the enemy jungler, typically you want to just be matching them and finding what they're doing and fighting them and matching like 2v2s, 3v3s type thing. 4v4s even. And you're just going to need to carry the fights, right? Yeah, but nothing's going to happen bot there, obviously. So I just opt into the base and... I grab Mercs there because they have Timo, Talia, and Renata, as well as Varasalt. So they have a lot of CC and magic damage. So two, two uh, positives of Mercs there. And getting CC'd this game probably means I'm going to die. So we want to avoid that, right? Because they have a pretty good CC chain. So avoiding that's ideal. And we find Talia in our jungle here. And then look, look at that hob damage, man. We got the double crit too. We missed that Q there. Just don't go back and look at that. That was embarrassing. But we take the Talia form and then we see Teemo just not respecting at all. Alt onto the blast cone there and we get spotted out by Teemo Shroom, unfortunately. But we're just playing in the river here, looking for opportunities. Chilling, chilling, chilling. Yeah, so here there's not really much to do because we have no ult, so we just want to play for that. And we just path down again, so this is a pretty typical game. Like, we're just really high CS this game because there's not many opportunities for us to do without setup. And this is the case when you have uh, the whole enemy team being range champs, so that's how you, like, you adapt to Viego in this sort of game. That's why I really like Hob this game. I know I'm not getting many autos, but I wouldn't be getting much value out of uh, Conk either, so that's why I'm really valuing it. By the way, guys, if you're interested in coaching, check out the link in the description. Joining Sand Sparrow will upgrade you um, in many ways. So just check that out. See if it's something you're interested in. So here we just go for the mid play, obviously. We're just uh, going by what we see. And uh, we don't want to be taking this fight, I don't think. But we do, because we are playing with the support. There's two carry champs, so obviously we're just going to win. And then we just want to cross to the bot side here because we want to play for this bot tower as well as dragon and there's not really a need for grubs at this point they're going to expire anyway notice how i play at the back of the bush here to um make so make it so uh Talia doesn't know i'm actually there so that's a really small detail but it's very important because if I stand at the front of the bush, her Q will hit me as well as the sweeper will see me. So she won't, will never walk into that far. But yeah, that was a really nice little detail there. And then we obviously just go kill this Varus. And we kill the Varus and now we want to try play for this turret if we can. And this Renata's playing very up. We go back in there for the last hit so Nort doesn't get it, but then she gets the kill on me, but hey, we are, we gave the support 1k gold, so who cares. And we just take that dub, we get stride breaker off that kill, that's what's so important. So that was, a, that was a pretty good death, giving support gold and then also getting enough gold for our stride breaker. Now we're really strong. The uh, Renata was on my friend list, so I said to enjoy the 1k gold bounty. But, uh, so here we just open on top because Dragon's gone. Obviously, that was predictable. And then we want to look for a fight. Well, ideally, we want to try breaking open mid turret, but also play for Herald. That's like the two big objectives next. But my mid laner dies, which really sucks for this game state. So, it kind of erases a lot of stuff that we can do right now. So, we just kind of have to chill. Then we look to go into the river here, and then we get we face check into these guys, but we got Mercs and we got uh, Stride Breaker, so that's just the power of this build. You can face check these guys if you're so fed that you can just run out. Probably shouldn't be face checking that bush. I thought I could get into it before they could, 
But yeah, right now, since Akshan died before, right, this is this is what the game state we end up with. Like, there's just nothing to do. But yeah, as soon as Akshan starts coming back on the map, I do his job here, so he can go top and match the Teemo. And this way I can also just uh, play for the Raptors, slash Ding the Tara. And then Talia ults mid, weirdly enough. But I don't want to fight that, 2v3. And all this isn't very useful. Plus, Renata counters me until I have GA. Yeah, so this is really good. We're just getting to the both side here. They're fighting mid a lot. We look to play mid here, look for a fight if possible, but nothing seems to open up opportunistically. Yeah, so we just go back to farming our camps. Trinity can deal with that Varus if he wants to. We are just waiting for the next objective or opportunity. So there's no opportunities right now because our Sunu just died then, which sucks, but that's all good. We'll just continue playing our game, waiting for opportunities. So when there's no opportunities like this, obviously you're just farming your camps. Because, like, you may as well be getting golden XP while nothing's happening, right? That's what camps are. And since Akshan died, I'm kind of just at this point, I'm not really able to make plays, but I'm more so just waiting for my teammates to stop dying, and I'm just replacing them and doing their jobs for them in this situation, so... That's why you see nothing really snowballing here. And Renata's ulting mid, like it's constant chaos wherever I'm not, so it feels a bit bad here. But yeah, the next objective is the next dragon. As well as just controlling this top side here for this Trindomy so we can push. But we see Talia flash there, which is nice. And then mid turret's 1 HP, so I get... I see an angle here to make a play. And my Nautilus is pinging it. We're, we're all on the same page here. And we get Renata's flash, but then we overcommit, unfortunately. But we don't over overcommit, so we die, but... Charge our W there up very nicely, and we just get the double kill. So that was a nice hit, the turret in their face, and they don't realize the turret's so low till it's too late, and then they die. And here we're just pushing mid. Sort of ending the game, low key, and then taking the enemy jungles camps while we can, and then we're probably just going to look to base here. Yeah. We don't get the best recall, but a team overextended. So right here, a bit of a mistake by me again. Uh, I need to just uh, ward this bush here. I don't know, not ward the bush, but ping my team off. I don't know where warding the bush came from. But yeah, right there in that situation, I really want to ward the bushes to say like... Oh, no, why am I saying ward the bush? I'm... I'm losing my mind. I need to ping my team off because we need a base there. It's there. It's going to be their turn and they can chase us out and then get map control. So we need a base there so we can match their tempo. Uh, but we don't there, so obviously it's going to put us into a rough position. That's why that happened there. Then we finish the Raptors. And Varus opts into charging the herald so i'm like yo kill this guy but then he's like oh wait this is a terrible idea and then he just opts to just run into our jungle the turning circle is not a, not ideal on the herald and then we just end up just dealing with these guys killing them and it does not end up working out too great for the enemy varus there yeah, we just go for the dragon here and then we want to swap sides at this point because we want to play for the baron next and then the tier twos come after Baron and then in him, turrets obviously. You all just want to work your way into getting vision on the side you want to play for before you play there. And then it's very, very fluid if you understand these concepts. Here I just opt to base? Do I know? The mist 
We see Yone face check this bush and we get a pick off of it. That was very, very nice patience from the Syndra there. We pick up the Yone kill and using that pick since death time is a 40 seconds at this point, which is pretty crazy. We opt into looking for the Baron here and seeing if we can make that happen. Yeah, getting the Baron here is going to speed up the game drastically. And then Talia shows bot, obviously, so this is just free. Our Baron is pretty fast, just because we have myself and Trindamir. Talia, I mean, Syndra's not very great at it, but she's trying. We opt into instantly basing, and then we have our awesome item in the base, as well as the pink ward. So now we're pretty much full build against this comp. We have everything we need to work against them. So next thing is to open up these inhibs if possible and get vision control on the side we're playing on. So this Teemo is a little overextended, so we just look for the play on him. We just grab the kill. And we try to catch this Talia because we just saw her in our Gromp, so if we can catch this guy, it'd be awesome. But he's just a bit too fast. Nice Knight's Vow there from the Noah, and we're just pinging our teammates what to do. Just push the lanes really simple at this point. Get the end going. Don't want to let their team have a comeback and scale up against us. That would not be ideal, yeah. Nice W from there, from us there, buffering the ult so we don't get comboed by the Talia, and then we're just hitting the turret. This isn't really legal what we're doing, like they should be not just conceding like crazy there, but they do. We can't engage on their champs, they're like anti-engage champs. But yeah, the Nautilus goes a bit ham there, but I just don't get baited by it. I just understand really well here that this fight's not great, we don't want to go into them like that, but Akshan spins in and ends. We just want to play slow here and play off like getting inhibs and then playing off barren waves. That's how we want to play. Like our comp can't just dive like that into an anti-dive comp. Talia, Renata, even Varus is pretty good at kiting. We look for the W on the Varus there, but nothing comes out of it. W doesn't connect there, we would have gotten a kill there. We didn't have hob up, but... We opt into just taking the Raptors here before basing to match our team's tempo. See how they're dead? We want to base and be in a position where we are matching them and being on the, the same line as them. So, if you're on the same line as them, then they're not going to get caught and you won't get caught either. Because, like, you're playing as a team, right? So, any fight's going to be... Uh, either in your favor or even, but if you're on the wrong line as your team, so me and Syndra are on the same line right here, but our team are ahead of us, the Trin and Akshan are ahead of us on their tempo line, they need to be a bit careful not to get picked off. Obviously Noah, like, I don't know, he's just in Africa, he needs to be really careful, but obviously he's pretty hard to kill, so as long as he's careful, he should be fine. Unless he's face checking stuff, then he's just gonna die. That's just how I think about that, and then the next thing is just to go open this top turret, and then actually I'm just winning side here. Very chill. We look on this Yone for a kill. He got his ult, and then we just push the turret here. I'm taking the turret with the red buff. We get the reset there. Put the W on the action looking for the pentakill if possible unable to get that but yeah we just look for the end here hope you guys enjoyed the video learn a lot drop a like drop a sub if you can help me out and consider joining the coaching program below peace 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 guys good good luck in your games